Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the greatest time of the day. From the center of the universe, New York City, it's the main event you've been waiting for. It's time to go in the cage with Cyclone! for the 57th time on this June 24th, 2019, your Messiah has come home. And I feel as old as Messiah. My knees are killing me. My back is killing me. Ugh. I know, I know. Stop complaining. But it is what it is. As Max Holloway would say. Um... So, right off the top, I have some breaking news. There's so much to get to. i, I got to put this up on top. For those of you who don't know the news yet, I am breaking it for you. Vox Media, who runs MMA Fighting, has dropped its two main shows. The MMA Beat and... The MMA Hour. Both obviously were started by Ariel Hawani. Luke Thomas a year ago picked up the slack when Ariel went to ESPN. And Luke cannot handle it anymore. The trips from Washington where he lives to New York twice a week is getting to him. So today was the last MMA hour and on this past Thursday was the last MMA beat no more he said maybe they will reboot in the future maybe they, they will have a new relaunching don't know it seems like Vox Media has flipped its entire staff so I don't know but no offense to hear, but hey guys at Fox Media, if you need somebody, I don't know, I could be available for the right price, which really isn't that much because I am a cheap whore, so anyways, like I said, there's just so much going on, so much to get to, um, but first, you guys, come on, just click share. It's really simple. And it's done. That's all you have to do. Um, I want you guys to check out EffectiveAggression.com. Starting to get hot. Going to need t-shirts. Perfect site for them. EffectiveAggression.com. Uh... Obviously, CycloneComedy.com, all my goings on, taped the first episode of the Cyclone Variety Show in God knows how long this past week, or at least attempted to. Uh, now I'm in summer hiatus for that. And obviously, check out Psyche Prods on Facebook, C-Y-C-I-E. P-R-O-D-Z. Psyche Prods. And hey, Susan Walker. And obviously, check out CycloneComedy.com. Okay? Um, when we come back, we have, we, we, there's so much MMA, but we're going to start off with some wrestling. Uh, lots of wrestling to talk about. Lots of boxing to talk about. We're going to do that first when we come back after this.
This is Frank Edgar. This is the Barbarian, Tim Boach. I'm World Series of Fighting undefeated lightweight champion, Justin Gaethje. Got MMA man. legend, UFC Hall of Famer, Ice Man. Tuck it out. And you got the guts. Step in the cage with Cycle. Okie dokie smokey. So let's start with WWE's stomping ground. Wow. I got, uh, overall, I say A minus, a B plus, and I'm grading it on a curve, frankly. Uh, who knew? I mean, look, the, the, the first half of the card, it seemed like somebody else was writing the, the, the storylines for WWE because everything went smooth. You could get invested in the storylines. Everything went pretty darn good. I was impressed. But then about midway through the card, it started going in reverse again. I, I don't know why the WWE can't. I I don't know what. It's not even the, it, the company, I, the, the writers. I I don't understand why they can't put together one solid card. I don't know. Maybe Rudy Asher will come up on the chat and, and he'll explain it to me because I can't figure it out. Um. I don't mind Drew. Gulak uh, becoming the new cruiserweight champion, taking it from my guy Tony Nese, even though he didn't pin Tony Nese to win it in a three-way. But if it can't be Tony Nese, Drew Gulak is a solid, solid person to put a strap around his waist. I'd like to see a nice storyline between the two of them. Whether that happens, who knows? Uh, I th moving along on the card, a lot happened. What are you referring to, Susan? Um, further down on the card, it. L let, me, let me break down Lacey Evans and, and demand Becky Lynch. They're building towards Lacey Evans taking that strap away from Becky. Might not happen the next time they face off. Might not happen the time after that. But I can see, I can see it now. I know a lot of times I say, I don't know, I'm not Karnak. But this, this I can see. I, I, it just, it smells like a duck. It quacks like a duck. It walks like a duck. So it's a duck. They are going to take that strap away from Becky Lynch and put it around Lacey Evans' waist. Now look, it's a pretty waist to have a belt around. Don't get me wrong, but... I'm always going to be a Becky Lynch fan. Uh, and I, I, I find it shocking that, that talking about belts, that everyone else basically kept, kept the straps except for Samoa Joe. And I don't understand that. You put the belt 
back on Samoa Joe. Have him drop it, put it back on him. I know you have him quickly drop the belt again. And, and look, nothing against Ricochet. But Samoa Joe is the, the, he's the perfect heel right now for this generation. And I, I, if they were going to have Ricochet take it from him, it didn't need to happen on a, pretty much a mediocre card that a good number of people were not really paying attention to. If you're going to have Samoa Joe drop the belt to Ricochet, do it in a, in a bigger event. Do it. Do it. I don't. I'm not going to say like a mania type or. SummerSlam. I have something like that happen there. Because now if you if you take the strap off of Ricochet and give it back to Samoa Joe, it's like the belt becomes a hot potato. It, the belt doesn't mean anything. You can't invest in a champion if the belt goes here, then here, then back here, then back here, then back here. Then back here, then back here, then back here. I don't want to see the belt passed around like my ex-girlfriend. Okay. Belts need to mean something. Belts need to to stay put for a while. There. I said what I had to say. Um as far as boxing news is concerned, it pretty much looks like Jermel Charlo is going to get his rematch against Tony Harrison talking about losing belts to, to Possibly regain his belt. I'm going to assume because Charlo ripped apart uh, Jorge Cota really easily. Walked away with no damage. Maybe in the fall? Maybe. Okay, so we're end of June, July, August, September. October, November, even though that's winter. Yeah, not fall, winter. By by the the time the, the New Year's ball drops in Times Square, I think it's a safe assumption that Jamel Charlo will once again be holding his belt. Although then again, maybe Tony Harrison cracks him and knocks him out. Could go either way. Uh, it looks like Danny Garcia is taking on Mikey Garcia, and that would probably happen in late August in the Battle of the Garcias. If two Garcias win, fight, it's guaranteed a Garcia is going to win. <sighs> I like Mikey. I, I, I like Mikey Garcia a lot. But I think. Danny Garcia can take him. I mean, Danny Garcia is holding on by a thread. And I, I there's just something in me that, that says Danny Garcia can one-up Mikey Garcia. Um, the welterweight championship is finally on its way to being unified. Big round of applause to the boxing powers that be. Um, the very first step is Errol Spence, the uh, the IBF champion, taking on WBC champion Sean Porter. That's going to be not too far from my house at the Barclays Center. Um, once again, in the fall, th this fall is going to be a lot in the New York tri-state area between boxing and wrestling and, and MMA. Lots of cards in the tri New York tri-state area. Lots of business. So maybe I could get some, some interviews going. Fingers crossed on that. Anyways, 
and obviously the winner will eventually take on uh, Terrence Crawford, and then we will see what we shall see, what we shall see, as my grandmother used to say. Uh, it's hard to go against Terrence Crawford, despite me wanting to. I don't want to root for that guy. I don't want to say he's going to win. But if it winds up being Sean Porter, Sean Porter, with all due respect to Sean, doesn't have a chance in high holy hell against Terrence. And TC against Errol, that's a fight I, me and, and, and I bet you want to see as well because that truly is one verse two in... Darn, man. It's so hard to pick between those two. I would lean towards Terrence, but I want Errol Spence to smoke him. I really, really do. Uh, let's do a cross of... Uh, and get into the, this consequences for crossing the line. In the build-up to... Paulie Malinaji, Brooklyn boy, from Benson Hoist, 18th Avenue, uh, and Artem Lobov, the goat. Paulie stepped over the line a hundred times over. His posse stepped over the line. And I'm saying as someone who, who stands up for Brooklyn boys, when Brooklyn boys reach that top level. But it it made him the villain in the story. It, you can't root for a guy who spits on an opponent, who, who cheap, sla, ch cheap shot slaps him. And the post-fight presser, my God, I want to know what drugs Poli Malinaji was on. I only got hit once? Really? Look, first of all, I get it. You, you, got, you got pillows for hands, and, and they break easily, and you broke one hand, your right hand, you don't know about your left hand. It sucks. It absolutely sucks that a fighter can't be honest with himself and the entire planet. You pieced him up, really? No, he didn't piece up Artem. He landed a couple of jabs, but the entire fight, he was backpedaling. He was on his bike. Now, true, it... Maybe if he didn't break his hand, it would have been different. But maybe this, maybe that, maybe that, maybe this. You can't do maybes in this world. And he got his comeuppance. It's good that Artem won. Okay. Paulie, hopefully, is now truly retired from everything. I, I don't want to see him get in the ring or the cage or do anything again. You know, as a matter of fact, one of the funny memes I saw was you spend years chasing the McGregor purse only to be beep slapped by his side piece. And it's it's funny, but but it's true. And look, Artem... Artem might go into boxing now. You never know. Artem, Artem might not be the perfect fit for MMA, but Artem has heart. Artem has desire. And we'll see how far that takes him. You, you, stranger things have happened, folks. Okay? Um, and the other thing on the, on the bare knuckle card... Uh, Dakota Cochran taking on uh, Chris Lieben on short notice. Give it up to this guy. 
Chris Lieben is a monster. He is a freaking killer beast. And Dakota somehow got, got inside his range, cracked him, busted up uh, Chris's face really, really bad. And picked up a win in his uh, BKFC six debut. You gotta give, you gotta give it up to guys that 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 throw down knuckles out. That's impressive. Yes, thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Side piece. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, and, like, and like I said, Artem, Artem is what Artem is, and, and that's the important thing, is that Artem got his, poorly, I mean, got his comeuppance, his payback, his consequences for constantly crossing the line. Okay. If Connor or anybody else was to spit in an opponent, everybody would be up in arms about it. Paulie did it and and, and it didn't get the 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 the, 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 the heat that, that anybody else would have caught. I don't know why. Word is though that Paulie took the fight because he got seven figures. And if he did, God bless him. But that makes you th wonder if Paulie got seven figures and Artem was well compensated. True, it, it was almost a sellout. I'm not sure if it actually was. But, How long can can bare knuckle fighting last if they're throwing the money around like that? It is so hard to maintain a budget if you're throwing money around like it's monopoly money. Makes you wonder. Yes, Susan, I am on fire because I'm sweaty, I'm hot, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. But yet I come because I love all of you. Mwah, mwah. Um, so, we got a lot more consequences for actions for crossing the line when we come back. But first, you guys have to click share. Please. I'm begging you. Purdy, 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 please. Click share. Check out CycloneComedy.com. Obviously, go to Psyche Prods on Facebook, and you can enter a raffle and win a prize. And by the way, everybody who I owe prizes to, tomorrow, everything gets shipped. Bernard Joseph Green, your stuff will probably be delivered to Rudy Asher, and Rudy Asher will hand him off to you. Uh, and obviously, guys, get yourself a t-shirt at EffectiveAggression.com. It's for a good cause, and you want to be known as someone who goes and does good deeds. Plus, it'll get you into heaven if you do a good deed. If you don't buy sure to help a good cause, big guy upstairs is going to be like, yo, you had a chance to help people out and you didn't. What's up with that, yo? So, go to EffectiveAggression.com and pick yourself up a t-shirt. Pick yourself up two t-shirts. Say, Cyclone sent me. Um, anyways, I'm rambling, and what we're going to do is, like I said, we got a bunch of consequences in the MMA world coming up right after this. 
Hi, I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Murgliotta. I'm Derek Munson. I'm Nick the Carney Lentz, and you're locked into the cage with Cyclone. I'm Jim Miller. This is Dan Murgliotta. And we is back. Um, who couldn't pay a couple of months ago, Susan? Let me know, because I'm curious. Who didn't you think could pay? Hmm. I don't know. Um, anyways... The UFC and every organization, it's not just the UFC, everyone. WWE, The Zone. You're not allowed to share their intellectual property. Okay? Something called copyright infringement. For a long time, companies looked the other way and didn't give a poop. Now, they give a poop, and they give a huge poop. And by huge, I mean huge poop. Uh, Bear Knuckle, um, I'm not sure if they had issues, Susan. Uh, and that's not something either I could find out, because obviously I'm not an accountant for them, so... I don't know. Um, they might have had trouble at first paying. I don't know if they have problems now. I mean, their sponsorships aren't that big. I think they have, I know they have Hooters, and I think they have like two other main sponsors, and that, that might be it. Oh, whoa, 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 yeah, the other one, the other bare knuckle organization, that, that's why it collapsed like one of my lungs is probably about to collapse. Uh, but anyways, there is a bar up in Yonkers, New York called the, the Burn More, Burn More, Burn Mar Tavern 2, which is up in, like I said, Yonkers, New York. And they apparently showed a couple of UFC events and charged. And the UFC is now going after them in a court of law. You gotta love, and, and look, I, I'm against bars charging a cover fee, because look, you're going to buy food, you're going to buy a drink, there's no reason for a bar to charge a cover price to get in f for a sporting event. It's different for a comedy show or for a music show or something like that, but for a sporting event, it's going to... make its money so this bar charged and they also stream stuff that they weren't supposed to stream UFC found out about it and they're going after them full tilt and you have to wonder if 
Sometimes the great white shark just lets the guppy go and just doesn't go after every little guppy. I think this might be a case. This might be one of those times where it might come back to bite the UFC in the buttocks type of a lawsuit. Um, and speaking of the UFC, the PBC um, is apparently up for sale. And the UFC is interested in purchasing it and then rebranding it as the much ballyhooed and much talked about Zufa Boxing and put Dana in charge of that. Now, here's the thing. If Dana's running the show at the UFC and he's running the show at a Zufa Boxing whether if it's the PBC or if it's their own new from the ground up company and him and the Fertitas want to buy an NFL team and he wants to be in charge of that too it's physically impossible for Dana to be in charge of the UFC a boxing organization and an NFL team I know there's no such word as impossible. It's I'm possible. But that is impossible. There are going to be consequences to those actions if that's what goes down. Such as the stress level will put Dana very quickly six feet under in a cardboard box. That's just too much for one person to take on. That is too many hats for one person to wear. Okay. And then for Dana White to, to at the, the opening showing of the Apex Center, which is where, obviously, the Dana White Contender Series is. Tough is going to be. They said that that's the venue that will hold the, their boxing events. Dana comes out and tells the press that boxing promoters are greedy and the best should fight the best. Well, yeah, Dana. That's right. The best should fight the best. Where have fans said that before? Hmm. Uh... Welterweight division, lightweight division, heavyweight division, flyweight division, bantamweight division. Boxing promoters are greedy, Dana. Really? Why don't you open your books? Why doesn't Dana just open up his books? And show he's not greedy. Because I guarantee each and every one of you watching this that if he was to open up the books, every single UFC fighter under contract, maybe outside of Connor, and, and e probably even Connor, will absolutely flip the hell out when they see what the company is pulling down compared to what they are making. And fighters deep down, you know what, the next fighter I talk to, I'm gonna just have to ask, because fighters deep down cannot be that stupid. They have to realize that they are getting hosed eight ways to Sunday. And quite frankly, it's not just the UFC. I, I assure you, I assure each and every one of you that Scott Coker and Bellator, Ray Seffo and PFL, despite the million dollar fin final prize, I guarantee you every single one of these athletes is underpaid. I guarantee it. And the consequence for 
that stupidity would absolutely be that fighters finally get the light bulb turned on in their heads collectively and they unionize and, and I am one of so many that wishes to God that they would look I'm not exactly a fan of unions look I'm in SEG I'm in the Screen Actors Guild am I pleased with my union no not even close but I think fighters absolutely need it and not just MMA fighters it needs to be a combat sports union where th there's a wing for MMA wrestling and boxing and yet yeah, it includes wrestling too because let me tell you something when Vince McMahon is done with you and your body is broken down you're gone. There's absolutely no health coverage in the WWE. Let alone, I can guarantee you, the AEW. Okay? These guys are just ragdoll robots. It, it, it's time to unionize for these guys. Um... And let's talk to Henry Cejudo, because th that, that's someone who's been crossing the line a lot. Henry freaking Cejudo. Look, you want to go after Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, Brie Cheese for all I care. I don't give a damn. Okay, you want to be creepy? You want to be that creepy guy, Henry Cejudo? God bless you. I don't care. But what we do care about is when a lot of you fans out there s chirp like a bird. Back when Conor was champ champ. Defend or vacate. Defend or vacate. Defend or vacate. Well, Mr. Cejudo said he's not defending 125. As a matter of fact, he said he wants to go after Max at 145. Now, there's no way in hell he's going to jump that queue. He jumped the queue at 135. Joseph Benavides has been sitting on the sidelines waiting for a crack at that title. And yeah, Henry has a win over him. But you know what? In a rematch, when you roll it back, anything can happen. And we've seen that a billion times over. Um... He's being overly creepy, Susan. Uh, but now, after the, this Artem Pauly fight, he comes out and he's like, I want to fight Vasyl Lomachenko. Really? Really, bro? Why don't you say you want to fight Hulk Hogan, too? Um, anyways, his, look, folks, and, and I say this with all due respect, Henry Cejudo is an American icon, a gold medalist. Okay, a hard worker. He works hard. I know it for a fact. But you're reaching for too many other lanes. There's a saying, it goes, stay in your lane. That's exactly what Henry Cejudo needs to do. Stay in your lane. As a matter of fact, not only is he not defending 125, he's not defending 135 either because the gimp arm hurt his shoulder and he's out till the... They say early 2020, but I'm... A, here's the thing. If you sit out for that length of time after sh shoulder surgery, you're not waking up on a Tuesday morning and say, hey, I'm going into the cage and fighting. 
you're having a long ass camp. So you're talking a 12 week camp. So that's three months. Let's say he's ready to come back in February. Three months, March, April, May. Now you're talking the middle of 2020, where two titles are now hold up, being held up because this guy wants to date a Bella twin and fight Lomachenko and do this and do that. Makes no sense. There needs to be, and I hate to use the term interim championship, but this is the perfect case for interim championships in both divisions. It, it really is. Or you strip Henry of one, you say, which one do you want to keep? The other one, you have a title fight right, right off the bat, and the one he keeps... You make an interim championship. And, and that's the way it's going to have to break down. Um, now, I did start the show talking about MMA fighting and, and Vox Media. And, and let me get into the, really fast this whole Chael P. Sonnen, Luke Thomas situation. Look. Chael P. Sonnen, the American gangster, the bad guy. Is he a good fighter? Yes. Is he a great fighter? I don't put him in the great category. Just like, look, and it goes back to when Chael and Kevin Ioli went after each other. Kevin Ioli calling him the worst cheater in MMA history and, and Chael saying, no, I was the best because I only got caught once. Once you cheat, you are never, ever, I don't care if you cure AIDS, bring about world peace, give me a trillion dollars cash tax free. You will never, by this guy, looked at as a great. You will never be on a GOAT list. You will never be on a pound-for-pound pound list. Includes John Jones, Anderson Silva. Look, I would love to put those guys on. No. That's why, as far as I'm concerned, no. Chael is not a great. He is not an all-time great. Very good, excellent. He repaired his, the damage that he did to himself career-wise. Now, it'll be interesting to see if TJ Dillashaw can. I don't know. Everyone loves a great comeback. I don't know. But for Chael to then... Go after Luke Thomas just because Luke said he wasn't great, even though he beat great fighters. Just because you beat a great doesn't make you great. It means on that particular night, you were the better man. That's all that that means. Um, Of course he would destroy Sohudo. He would destroy any MMA fighter. Harry, th there is nobody in MMA in any organization that could come close to fighting someone like Lomachenko. Um, but, so, Chael has this big rant saying, Luke, tell the truth. Tell the truth, Luke. I'm a great. And obviously Luke came back to this, mor this morning, this afternoon, and said, Chael, you'll, you'll get your response. And, and there's a reason why, there's a professionalism reason why he didn't do it on 
you know, the MMA hour. He's going to save it for his own show or his own YouTube channel. And I assure you, Luke Thomas will go after Chael. It's the way it is, you know. You, 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 you're just not a great if you cheat. Okay? End of story. I don't, I don't care if you accidentally did it. As a matter of fact, you don't accidentally stick a needle in your ass. You don't accidentally rub cream on you. Be like Chael. Chael has since day one fully admitted, yeah, you got me, I cheated. But then don't say you want to be considered a great. Consequences, folks. There's professionalism and there's consequences for your actions. He will forever, for all eternity, Chael will walk the line of being a really, really, really good fighter. And not a great. Um, so, guys, guess what? It's time for you guys to click share, all right? It is very, very, it's so important for me, okay? I don't ask for that much. I don't get that much in life. But what I want you to do is to click share. Please, click share. Um, check out CycloneComedy.com. Check out Psyche Prods on Facebook. Check out EffectiveAggression.com. And a quick reminder, guess who's in the house right now? Dennis Newman is in the house. And trust me, you guys are going to want to watch his show. He has an incredible special guest, Pauline Murphy, stopping by today. And trust me, you guys are going to want to put your eyes on Pauline Murphy. And your ears, too. So, you're going to want to do that. Trust me. Um... So, when we come back, it's going to be game time, folks. I'm Dennis Bermudez. Hi, I'm a creepy Ian McCall. Yo, I'm Kelvin Gaston. This is Mark Goldberg. Yo, I'm the world's most dangerous man, Hall of Famer Ken Shamrock, and you're getting tapped out in the cage with Psycho. And, look, let's face it, like I said, companies, organizations don't want you to use stuff. Well, guess what? I can still talk about it. Finish of the weekend has to be, has to be, the Korean zombie just wrecking Moicano. What that did is just put the entire featherweight division on its air. The featherweight division is now so... So exciting. You got Zabit, Frankie, Jose, Max, Ortega, Volkanovsky. And now Korean Zombie just jumped into the fray as well. Sick knockout. You guys got to check it out. It is all over YouTube. Um, now, let's celebrate today with what's happening on this day in MMA history.
on this day. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. So we have three birthdays. Max Koga, formerly of the PFL, hits the age of 30 today. Uh, Jessamine Duke, who is a OG, as they say, for the UFC women's divisions. Is concerned is the ripe old age of 33, and the uh, the the brand spanking new middleweight champion in Bellator, uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. turns 36. Now I know I always just do MMA history, but two things big wise. One thing in world kind of like wrestling history. The other was wrestling oriented. Today in 2007 is the day that Chris Benoit, the crippler, killed his wife, killed his son, and killed himself. Not a happy memory, but it happened on this day as well. As did in 2001... King of the Ring, Shane McMahon and uh, Kurt Angle just blasting each other through an actual sheet of glass. It was supposed to be, obviously, sugar glass. was real plexiglass that they went through and just tore each other's bodies up. That happened in this day in MMA and world history and sports history. Um... Now, really fast, everybody's favorite part of the show. Let's get to it right now. Let's do a raffle. Okie dokie, Smokies. Question number one comes from Kenny Hodgkins. Who's your pick to win in Ganu against Dos Santos? Look, I haven't really paid attention. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I like Dos Santos on the ground, but Francis is like Deontay Wilder. He just needs one shot to land, and it's done. So I got I, I to gotta go with Francis on that. Um, question number two comes from his cousin, Augie. After that surprising TKO, does Korean Zombie get a title shot? Well, he doesn't get a title shot, but he is now definitely in the picture. There's just too many people ahead of him in the queue. Um, and apparently he's probably going to get Jeremy Stevens next. And if he beats Jeremy Stevens, I'd like to see Korean Zombie take on Zabit, honestly. I think that would be a, to quote a Jim Ross wrestling reference, a pair six brawl. Um... Question number three comes from John James. Do you think it's possible that DC does not retire after the Stipe rematch? Well, look, anything in life is possible, John. Uh, but, eh, I, I don't think he's fighting John again. I, I think Stipe and he walks away. Question number four comes from Rudy Asher. If you could set a hypothetical UFC match... Without weight limits, what would it be? Well, Rudy, that's why I have this segment, Dream Fight. I do it there. I don't know. Um, Henry Cejudo against John Jones. There. Okay? There. Let John kick the hell out of Henry Cejudo. Um, and question number five comes from Susan Walker. Who do you have between Askren and Jorge Masvidal? Susan. That's UFC 239. That, that's that's going to be the UFC 239 raffle. I'm not going to give you that answer just yet. I haven't even thought about that yet. It's still two weeks away. I don't know. I don't know what way I'm leaning. But let's see who really fast wins. Winner numero one, Kenny Hodgkins. Back on the win streak, Kenny Hodgkins. Your prize will be out to you tomorrow. Now, ladies and gentlemen. 
Keep it right here on Strong Island Television because the Newman Show with Paulie Murphy is coming here in just a few minutes. And until next week, I am cycling saying like I say every week, just because all of you guys are not athletes doesn't mean you guys cannot be athletic supporters. Dos vidania.